walk alongside the Silver River, talk with Mother Nature for a while. She told me of her grief, of her children and her trust, and of her grave despair for the likes of you and me and us. That cry, no, she was. She did speak these tender words, these things that I am, I wouldn't change for any man. You know, I tried to comfort her. She listened to me say, and now the rain did fall. Over there at Silver Springs Mother Nature cried at Silver Springs. How the rain would fall. Mother Nature cried at Silver Springs. <laughs> Thank you so much, folks. Great to be, uh, great to be with you. Uh, you know, right around the uh, 1500s over there at uh, Silver Springs, that land was occupied by the Tabakwa Indians. There's the ones who called it Ocali. There was uh, there's a lot of them. And then like a lot of early societies, they organized themselves into clan-like groups, little tribes, each with their own chief. So the Tabakwa water was sacred. It uh, cleaned them, fed them, bathed them, floated their dugouts. But the springs really held something very spiritual to them because they believed that their ancestors came from those big dark caverns where the water now flows. They believed if you sat quietly around the spring, you could hear the murmurings of creation ever since the time began. Well, there was a young couple of a daughter of Chief Ikihonki. Her name was Winona, who met this young brave, Chulkata. He was the son of Chief Yemisi, Prince Chulkata, they called him. And they swam in the translucent waters, they hunted and fished together, and over time they fell deeply in love and wanted to get married. But it was the custom in those days, it was up to the chiefs to decide who got married and when. And Chief Ikihonki and Chief Yamasi really didn't care for each other that much. So they denied the kids the opportunity to be together. Chukulto was told that if he defied the Indian tradition, he would be banished from the tribe. Chief Ikihonki hid Winona in the forest. Chukulto was told she was dead. Well, you know, there is no force more powerful than love. And it wasn't long before those youngsters found each other alongside the Silver River. They climbed up to a dugout, rode up over to the springs. This was going to be their bridal home. In a lover's embrace, they exchanged their marriage vows. And Chukulta said, you know, we have broken tribal law. We can no longer live like this. Let us go to the place of our ancestors where we can live in peace and happiness. And he pointed to those big dark caverns down below the water. And all of a sudden, he gave her another big hug and they, they rolled over the side of the dugout down through the translucent water down to that little opening from where the water comes from. They passed out into the land where ancestors came from. Some people say nowadays their spirits come back to the spring. But only you can hear them their lovers. Out over the silvery waters, out over the silvery 
other springs. I hear the murmurings of creation. I hear the sounds of untamed things. Night starlight, silvery waters keep calling me back to silver springs. I feel the nearness of God as I go there. I feel the touch of angels' wings. Like looking down from on top of a mountain, peering deep into the springs. Water so pure and translucent reveals the marvels about which I sing. There are stories of lovers that were lost in these waters. Some say their spirits come back to the spring. Prince Jupiter and his beautiful Madonna. Some say their spirits are hovering over the springs. What if Claire Douglas and Bernice Mayo? Was Aunt Silla really 110? Is there such a place as the bridal chamber? Who would you expect to find there within? Framed in the power and the beauty of nature, you have strange and mystic ways. Voices that call from out of nowhere, singing the song of Silver Spring. Farthest first people thought water to be sacred. They are gone now like the wind and the rain. If they were here, they would stand up to injustice, unable to accept what is happening to the springs. It's the rotten egg odor of civilization pouring nitrates into the springs. How can we poison these precious waters? It's water that keeps alive all human beings. Out over the silvery waters, out over the silvery springs, I hear the murmurings of creation, I hear the sounds of untamed things. Night starlight, silvery waters, keep calling me back to silver springs. I feel the nearness of God as I go there, I feel the touch of angels wings. Out over the silvery waters, out over the silver springs. <laughs> Wasn't that long ago that the uh, the waters coming out of the springs over there, silver springs, was literally the purest water in all of the world. It's polluted now. Uh, nitrates run off from agriculture, people's lawns, golf courses. Devil time, I'm gonna fool you now. Oh, devil time, you'd like to bring me down. When I'm feeling low, my friends gather round. Help me rise one more time. Oh, devil fear, you with your icy hands. Oh, devil fear, you'd like to freeze me cold. But when I'm so afraid, my friends gather round. Help me rise to beat you one more time. Devil hate, I knew you long ago Before I found out about the poison in your breath Now when they hear your lies, my friends all gather round Let me rise to beat you one more time No storms or fire can ever beat us down The wind that blows, it carries us further on And you who fear, your friends will gather round Let me rise to sing it one more time
Oh, devil time, I'm going to fool you now. Oh, devil time, you'd like to bring me down. But when I'm feeling low, my friends gather round. And we rise to beat you one more time. Oh, devil fear, you with your icy hands. Oh, devil fear, you'd like to bring me down. But when we're so afraid, friends gather round. And we rise to beat you one more time. Devil hate, I knew you long ago Before I found out about the poison in your breath Now when we hear your lies, friends gather round We rise to beat you one more time No storm nor fire can ever beat us down The wind that blows, it carries us further on And you who fear, your lovers will gather round And we'll rise to beat you one more time Because we had a Navy late 1960s, it was real curious to see if I could uh, make a living, you know, telling lies and singing songs. I went to work for one of these New York agents and liked to send performers out on one-nighters across the country one night in California, next night in Chicago, next night in Miami. The only problem was I had to drive in between gigs. <laughs> I had a little Italian sports car, an Innocente. It was an Austin Healy. Chassis with a Gia design body, Morelli ignition. It was, it's a cool car. You ever saw any of Fellini movies, especially Juliet and the Spirit? You, you've seen the car. So I did a, a show at Lexington, Kentucky, one February. It was about eight degrees above zero. I had to get to Philadelphia for the next day. And after driving six hours, that car didn't have a heater. Frozen stiff, just outside of Zanesville, Ohio. The place was loaded with all kinds of truck drivers. I should tell you that from that same car, I had a brand new 12 string guitar stolen from me one time. Instead of cutting the hole in the roof right alongside the door so you can put your arm outside, lift up the handle, open the door, take the guitar out that way, they made the hole in the roof big enough to lift the guitar out through it. <laughs> so I took the guitar with me and there were truck stuff. I had long hair and the place was loaded with all kinds of truck drivers. They took one look at me shivering with my arms around these guitars. They thought I looked strange. <laughs> Walked over to the counter and ordered me a hot cup of tea. They knew I was strange. <laughs> I didn't have time to explain to them it was part of my English heritage, which happens. I had my stomach when I drink some of that roadside coffee. It wasn't long for one of them good old boys walked over to me and said, just, Son, you pick that thing? Yes, sir. I believe that. I about you pick it for me right now. Now, my, my, my hands are too cold. I can't play that guitar for you just now. And then another truck driver would come over. You one of them hippie communist freaks go around smoking all that alternative tobacco? <laughs> they want to see you pick something on the guitar, boy. No, man, my, my hands are too cold. I can't play that guitar. Then another truck driver, and another, and another. Gradually, I began to fall out from all that external source of heat. <laughs> you know I mean? Besides that, one of them knew how to strike home. He pulled out his top very cowhide swank bill fold, put a brand new $20 bill on the table. Followed it with a brand new $10 bill, and I'm going, keep them cards and letters coming. <laughs> Next thing I know, those tobacco stained fingers of his ramble around the pocket of his Big Mac work shirt. Came up with a $5 bill, rolled up so tight, and God only knows what he was snorting through that thing. <laughs> $35 on the table. All those bloodshot, pearly blue eyes on me. So, son, if you can pick under the double eagle, that money's yours.
after picking under the double eagle, I had ten new friends for life. Though I no longer thought it was strange that I was drinking hot tea and it broke out a little moonshine to help thaw me out. A couple of sips that Mountain Ambrosia, I started doing requests. Did a whole bunch of them Hank Williams, Merle Hanger tunes, but as I mentioned earlier, I was on, I was on a tight schedule. Just picked up the guitar, was making it out the doorway, and that's when uh, Homer Bull Teeter walked up to me. Those truck drivers had the finest names I'd ever heard of, people like Hempstead Priestley, Marcus Fites, told us some of them, Foggy Dell. Homer Bull Teeter is one who walked up to you earlier. He said, you wanted it? He followed me out to my car. How far you got to go, boy? Philadelphia. He said, well, you better wait here. Walked over to the cab of his Jimmy Diesel truck, came back with them, a little flying Dutchman tobacco tent, unscrewed the cap, laid before my eyes the wildest assortment of pills I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> Yeah, take one of these, make your mouth dry, know you're high, you can do six months driving in 30 seconds. <laughs> Did learn something that night. Learned why truck drivers can't do 55 miles an hour. In many ways my life's been blessed With the warmest love and tenderness Oh, I've known failure and success Somehow survived it all Oh, but I wanted to be Jesus I wanted to be Sue Save the sins of the world and be invincible, amen. Oh, but I can only be the man I am. Now inside me there's this crazy flame. Dreams and visions all aflame. Oh, I wanted more must confess the time he raises blame and I live through spring, summer, fall now winter's closing in the silver's in my hair like snow there's nothing to pretend oh I wanted to And I wanted to be Superman To save the sins of the world and be invincible, amen Oh, but I could only be The man I am Oh, I wanted to I wanted to be Superman To save the sins of the world Be invincible, amen Navigate. 
I don't care where we go To the top of the mountain or the valley low I'm gonna let my heart show me the way Ain't coming back to the break of day And it's drive, drive, drive And it's hard Line. And it's drive, drive, drive Yeah, we ain't coming back We both feel right Now I know I've kept my heart locked up Afraid to live and afraid to love But tonight's the night I'm gonna set it free I'm Gonna give it a name so it'll talk to me Yes, I know I've kept my heart locked up, but now the motor's running and enough is enough. And it's drive, 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 and it's hard to find. And it's drive, 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 and we ain't coming back, we both feel right. Gonna take my heart out for a drive. We got way too far out of touch this time. Gonna have myself a good talking to. Get to know each other like we used to do. Yes, I know I've kept my heart locked up. Now the boat is running and up us enough. And it's drive, drive, drive. Heart of mine. And it's drive, drive, drive. And we ain't coming back. We both feel right. So I think a lot of you folks know that. For a number of years, I've been involved in trying to uh, keep the uh, Gamble Rogers Book Festival alive and going uh, forward. Yeah. You think it would get easier every year, but it doesn't. It gets really strange. But I have a, a, a mentor in uh, Margaret Longhill who's been doing the Will McLean Festival for much longer. And uh, every time Margaret and I have any communication, whether it's on the phone or email, First thing we always say to each other is, man, how much longer can we do this? <laughs> yeah. So sing your songs about rivers, sing about the springs, sing about the panther. Most of living things. Sing about the wise old down the lonesome Cowie Brit. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. You know, me and Margaret have been friends for oh so many years. We've had our share of laughter more than our share of tears. We'd always like to ask each other how much longer can we go on? Finding a place in Florida for people to sing their Florida song. And me and Margaret left the man known as Will McLean. We helped him through life's ups and downs as they lived out his master's plan. You know, somehow we got the message Will made us understand that it was up to us to protect the dignity of our beloved Florida sand. So sing your songs about rivers. Sing about the springs, sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Oh, sing about the wise old owl, the lonesome cowy grit. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. 
good for me and Margaret. And me and Margaret love the place known as Rainbow Springs. We like to look out over in the Wicklacoochee, watching birds on the wing. We like to bring people together to share their hopes and dreams. When it comes to Florida, we want to hear people sing. I mean, Margaret loved rivers, loved to watch them gently flow. We've seen so many people come, so many more go. We always were so grateful for the treasures they left as they go. Me and Margaret knew someday we'd join that river's flow. So sing your songs about rivers and sing about the springs. Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Oh, sing about the wise old down the lonesome cowie grit. Just keep singing your songs from Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. Me and Margaret love children. I guess it's the hope in your eyes. You want to see them loving, protected beneath the Florida skies. Sure, well, I'm never learn a difference between right and wrong. After that, we wanted them to be singing Florida songs. So sing your songs about rivers, sing about the springs, sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Oh, sing about the wise old owl, the lonesome cowie grit. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. Oh, sing your songs about rivers and sing about the springs. Sing about the panther and the smallest of living things. Oh, sing about the wise old down, the lonesome cow you get. Just keep singing your songs for Florida. Do it for me and Margaret. So folks, we need your uh, help in drawing a, attention to all my fellow Floridians about water. <coughs> Seems a pretty convenient thing every time you turn the tap on and have it there, but uh, some pretty strange things going on. Over there in Silver Springs, there's a man from Canada, a billionaire, who's uh, <laughs> been buying up land around uh, Silver Springs, the Oklahoma, and around uh, Fort McCoy, with the idea that he's going to raise 20000 head of cattle, grass-fed beef, build a slaughterhouse. Uh, he's applied for a permit to drill 130 deep water wells into the aquifer. Now even now with all this rain that we've been having, the, the spring, the silver spring is running about 30% below normal. And even though our gardens are doing okay and our lawns are doing okay, but uh, groundwater in Florida is still at a, at a, you know, it's at a dangerous level. So we need to uh, draw everybody's attention. Uh, you know, it's interesting, you know, even down around uh, Homosassa Spring, so High Spring, so all these areas, corporations are coming in and they're sucking that water out of the ground, putting it in little bottles and they're selling it back to you. So folks, the injustice of all this is, is they don't pay for that water. They pay for a permit to dig the wells. The water is free. And it's, it's going away. So people always come up to me all the time and say, well, I'm uh, pretty sincere about all this stuff. I guess you're from Florida. Well, folks, I'm not originally from Florida. As a matter of fact, I'm from up north. You say that to different folks down here, you'll get a different reaction. I met an old conk down Key West one year. I said, did yeah, man ever get up north? He said, yep, yep, yep. I get up to Miami twice a year. <laughs> But I did grow up in the uh, wilderness. My used to go to the mailbox and pack a lunch. <laughs> I grew up alongside of a river. A river at times got so low you could walk across it in places. And other times the floodwaters would come crashing up against our house. And I was always amazed how my daddy insisted on carrying everyone in the family out through the floodwaters. Mom, my two sisters, myself, sometimes the water would be right up to his chin. We thought it was incredible because my father was the only one in the family who didn't know how to swim. I learned how to hunt fish trapped alongside that river. You know, Henry David Thoreau says we all ought to learn how to do that because of the lessons that it teaches you about wild things and wild places. He said, we learn those lessons when you quit. 
Now, not surprising, a young man growing up in the 1940s might have as one of his childhood heroes none other than Tarzan. We've all seen those Tarzan movies and know that the storyline takes place in Africa. But the truth of the matter is most of those movies were made right here in Florida. So when I moved to St. Augustine some 40 years ago, that's where I thought I moved to. I thought I moved to Africa. So wow, this is a wild place. Over the years, I've really learned the importance of wild places to the human condition. Everybody has their favorite wild place for you. It might be your own backyard, that empty lot across the street, woods down the end of the road. I'm going to tell you about, a little bit about one of my favorite wild places here in Florida. It's the Okawaha River. <laughs> My home in St. Augustine, I can put in on that river any number of places. It takes maybe about an hour to get over there to do that. One of the ways I can do it is I can drive over to the little town of Wielaka, put my canoe into the mighty St. John's River, cross that river, enter the mouth of the Oklawaha. You know, when I start to paddle my canoe up against that river, my back gets a little straighter. I grow a little taller. A gray film falls from my body like tears as my senses are awakened by the beauty that surrounds me. I know I'm on an ancient river, a river older than the flow of human blood through human veins. A hundred species of fish, two hundred species of birds, three hundred species of mammals. It's a river not filled with just water, but the lives of our ancestors. And about two-thirds of the way on up towards the Rodman Dam in that direction on the left-hand side there's a real nice little sandy beach area. It's a great spot to camp out, especially when the water level is low. And about 25, 30 yards above the spot on a bluff, there's an Indian mound. An Indian mound that bears witness to the fact that right there in that very same place, there were human beings, just like you and me, 12,000 years ago. Now, folks, 12,000 years ago, most of North America was covered with glaciers. All the animals, to keep from being frozen in glacial ice, they came to Florida. Florida was a wild place. The Akloaha remembers. Giant mastodons, woolly mammoths, saber-toothed tigers, camels, sloths. Florida was a wild place. So I decided to camp out at that little spot I was telling you about one night. Proceeded to uh, pitch my tent, made a real nice little campfire, started to make what my friends call Baba Chew Bob's Campfire Chili. Guaranteed to burn you twice. <laughs> and I bought along this bottle of mezcal tequila with me to help put the fire out of you. you. Know what I mean? Now you all know that's the one with the worm in it, right? My favorite time of night is when the great wash of evening falls over the Oklahoma. I can watch the dance of shadow on night. That first bright wandering star, Venus, appears in the sky, followed by all those pale stars shining above me. You know, as the night gets darker and darker, each star of sparkles shines just like a diamond. So there I am. I'm sitting in this little camp chair looking up at the bright wandering stars, listening to the owls who gators beller, the frogs sing. I'm sipping on that mezcal tequila. Staring at the caveman's television. If I started to get real sleepy, you figured I better turn in. So I went inside the tent, took off all my clothes, lay down and got ready to drift off and go to that place where sleep is perfect. All of a sudden I heard a terrible sound. It was coming from outside my tent. I knew I wasn't going to get to sleep with that noise going on, so I got back up, put my clothes on, fired my ears on down to the water's edge, and there was a big bullfrog stuck in the mouth of a big water moccasin. That frog was making a soul disturbing sound. Now folks, I'm no fool, not the kind of man that ever mess around with a water moccasin. This one had a big frog stuck in his mouth. I knew he couldn't bite me. I reached down and picked him up behind the back of the head. He's all twisted around my arm and grabbed that frog, twisted it one way and then another. When a poisonous snake bites, they don't always inject venom. Sometimes they do what's called a dry bite. Must have been the case here because there's nothing wrong with that frog. As a matter of fact, there's one happy little fellow when I let him go. See you, man. That water moccasin wasn't happy with me. Show me the gold ugly cotton mouth. I couldn't let him go. He'd bite me. So I didn't know what to do. I 
turn one day around the fireplace. I'm walking around in circles wondering the world, what am I going to do with this thing? And that's when I noticed that bottle of mezcal tequila. I picked it up, pulled the cork out with my teeth, took a slash, got ready to take another slash with that tequila, the water bottle. Yeah. Yeah. His eyes started rolling around a little bit like tops. But you know, about 30 seconds after I did that, I could feel him kind of loosen his grip a little on my arm. Okay, we'll look up at more slashes that I gave him the worm. <laughs> Three minutes later, that water box that was hanging up my arm like a piece of wilted lettuce. Took him down the water's edge, hung him out over the water. There we go. And I had a pretty big adrenaline rush after all that. Knew I wasn't going to sleep anytime soon, so I put another log on the fire sat down in that little camp chair. Look up at the bright wandering stars. Listen to the owls hoop. The gators beller. The frogs sing. Yep, and I was sipping on that mezcal tequila. Fell sound asleep right there in that chair. And I don't know how long, how long I was asleep, but I woke up and I felt something bumping me on my leg. It's that same water, Marcus right? said he bought me another frog. <laughs> Picked up that bottle of tequila, gave him a couple more slashes of that tequila, put him down the water's edge and let him go. I went and got me a great night's nice rest. <laughs> I'm canoeing past that same spot about three or four days later with a real good friend of mine. Here come that same water moccasin swimming out towards the canoe. That's a gamble of a frog. Yeah, we'll sit down by that's not a frog. It's a water moccasin. You go diddling around with one of those things, one more white shirt will do you. And you gotta remember Florida. It's a If I could only reuse time, I'd go back a hundred years to a place where I could listen to the lullaby of the rivers, where now and then their will arise out of the waters, Indian spirits, to tell me how they got their names, to sing the lullaby. Aklawaha is a toughie. He can find a with the coochie. Apalachicola, Wakala, Was is a sailor. Kalusa had she kissing me. Aklap me choked to hatchie. Me Kanala hatchie and the swan you're singing. The lullaby of the river. Oh, you can hear what they are saying. You can hear them all singing the lullaby of the rivers. The moving water makes the music. The pureness creates the healing. The reflection give up the secrets to the lullaby of the river. He can find a with the coochie, Apalachicola, what color? Was is a sailor? Could lose a hatchy kissing me? I block me chalk to hatchy, the Connolly hatchy and the swan you're singing, the lullaby of the river. Now there were those who came before us. Who called this place black water? Who knew their lives were mirrored so completely in the water? 
Our rivers are telling us those stories Full of wildness and mystery Because our lives flow as rivers do To the lullaby of the river Akawaha in Chitutti He can find a with the coochie Apalachicola, Wakala Wasis a sailor Kulusahachi Kissimmee Akalakni Choktahachi The Kanalahachi and the Swanee are singing The lullaby of the river Akluwaha Ichitatni He can find a with Lakuchi Apalachicola Waka Wasis a Silla Kalusahachi Kissimi Aklakni Choktahachi The Kanalahachi and the Swanee are singing The lullaby of the river